The iPhone 12 Pro features the new A14 Bionic chip, which promises better performance for gaming. Today, we're going to put it to the test and see how it compares to gaming on the iPhone 11. First up is 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark. This free app allows you to test and compare the performance of the latest iPhone and iPads with easy to use benchmarking tools. For this video, we're using the Wildlife Benchmark mode. This mode is a quick one minute test that measures your device's ability to provide high levels of performance for short periods of time. The rendering resolution here is 1440p. The iPhone 11 sees an average frame rate of 42 FPS, while the iPhone 12 sees 38 FPS on average. This is very interesting to see. Since the iPhone 12 is only a week old, many apps are still not optimized for the A14 Bionic chip. You'll see this come into play later in the video too. The iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro are both powered by the same A14 Bionic chip, so you can expect the gaming performance to be the same. I have confirmed this with a representative from Apple. Next up is Hot Lava and its new AR mode, which is only available to Apple mobile devices with LiDAR support. Well, the new cameras in the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro have LiDAR support. LiDAR allows games to interact with the real world like never before. For example, in Hot Lava, you can insert game objects all around into your living room and get the main character to jump all over your furniture. It's pretty incredible to see and it actually works quite well. Yes, sometimes it can be a little grainy in low lit locations and occasionally the character or game objects would clip through real life objects. But guys, LiDAR is only a few months old, so this is to be expected. It will only get better over time. Now we're looking at everyone's favorite free mobile game, Call of Duty Mobile. This game has, well, unfortunately, somewhat poor optimization on the iPhone 12 right now. It's not unplayable by any means, but it's definitely noticeable. You see, there are times when the frame rate would drop quite dramatically, well below 60 FPS, and the controls were not always responsive. On the iPhone 11, however, it performed fine at 60 FPS and ultra settings. Keep in mind, we are recording all of this footage with an external capture card, so performance won't be affected. It's all happening in real time. Up next, we have Tauceti Technology Benchmark. This is a free sci-fi action FPS that showcases the high quality visuals available to current high-end mobile devices. The app is only supported on iOS devices with 3GB of RAM and a fast GPU. The iPhone 12 Pro has 6GB of RAM and the iPhone 12 has 4GB. Now, the game is actually just a demo that contains the beginning of the full game, which is not released yet, but it also has a handy benchmark feature, featuring two locations. So, when using this mode on both phones, the iPhone 11 just wins at an average FPS of 30.1 on both locations. The iPhone 12 Pro experienced one noticeable performance drop on both locations, which lowered the average frame rate at the end. And last is Genjin Impact, a fantastic free action role-playing game. Similar to the previous tests in the video, our iPhone 12 sees a few frame rate drops when the 60 FPS mode is enabled. On our iPhone 11, it also has performance issues when in the 60 FPS mode, but it's not nearly as noticeable. The game was already not well optimized for most Apple devices and even on PS4, so I'll give the iPhone 12 Pro some slack. So, what can we take from all this? 
Well, I don't think the performance here is really a representation of the iPhone 12's real potential. Developers just need to optimize their apps for the iPhone 12 and A14 Bionic chip, and all should be well. If you enjoyed this video and want to see how the performance fares in a month or so, do let me know. Anyway, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.